Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is Kasra. If this is your first time here, a um, little bit of a story about myself. Um, I'm a machine tool designer by trade. Uh, I spent a uh, better part of a decade designing uh, bespoke machine tools. The smallest one we made was uh, a desktop size five axis machine for dental or jewelry industry. And the largest one we ever designed was a, a portal machine uh, for metal, metal working industry with 18 meters in length, five and a half meters uh, between columns and two and a half meters in Z axis stroke, uh, full five axis with changing heads and everything and uh, all different types of machines in between these two. Um, at the moment, I am building a, a very accurate, uh, super precision uh, five axis machine in my own garage for myself. Uh, this is a bit of a hobby DIY type of project uh, and I intend to make some uh, precision parts with it, such as medical parts or, or watch parts. Um, so uh, there are other videos on the channel explaining the design process and some of the assembly process. There's a few live uh, videos uh, on the channel as well where I actually showed uh, in live what I was assembling on the machine. And uh, today's video is just an update on what I've been doing over the past uh, couple of weeks, which is uh, mainly assembling the Z-axis and a few uh, parts uh, around the machine. So uh, without further ado, I'll strap the camera onto myself and I'll uh, show you around and uh, um, show you what's been updated and added to the machine. Okay, so as you can see, uh, now we have a Z-axis. Um, so the Z-axis mechanism is very similar to the X and the Y axis. Um, so we've got a, a piece of uh, granite stone which has been lapped to a, a very good parallelism uh, accuracy. So uh, when I checked it, it's, uh, it's about one and a half micron parallel, these two faces. Um, then also these sides have been lapped uh, square to those um, those. Uh, larger faces as well so the sides have been lapped as well so we use uh, one of the sides as our datum surface uh, so we've got this uh, plate and this has a, a very good flatness on one side because i lapped it myself it's been fly cut but i also lapped it uh, when i checked it it wasn't uh, particularly that good uh, in terms of flatness so i lapped one side and then um, this uh, granite stone, the actual z-axis, it's got two um, holes uh, all the way through from this side to that side and uh, I've used two long bolts uh, so threaded, uh, threaded rods uh, and then we've got a knot and a locking washer uh, on either side so I'm basically sandwiching this in, in, in between uh, then we've got uh, these uh, blocks, the Z-axis, uh, it's got only one block, uh, but it's a longer version block, it's not uh, similar to these, it's about 35% longer uh, than the blocks that I've used for the X and for the Y, um, and it's proven to be enough actually when I uh, did some testing on it, um, so we don't really need a, a double block, the, the actual block length is about the same uh, length of this plate. So it's pretty, pretty long. Um, so that's on one side. On the other side, we've got um, these two bolts uh, that they apply uh, basically a preload onto uh, this other block uh, that you can see here. So it's basically pushing inwards uh, on these special type uh, adjustable preload uh, linear guideways. The other thing uh, that uh, we did, uh, when I say we, uh, I had a friend of mine here uh, helping me uh, with, uh, with assembly, is uh, we've now added the cooling pads uh, for the, uh, whatever you want to call it, y-axis or x-axis and the z-axis. So that's a cooling pad that you can see there. There's another one there. 
and these cooling pads uh, I've got um, a pipe or a hose that goes into this one this goes all the way that way and then comes up on the z-axis one which is there I hope you can see it and then using this one goes all the way around to the other one on the z-axis which is this one comes down underneath it's connected uh, with this longer one here goes all the way there and it comes out of this fitting that you can see then it comes up with a pipe on the z-axis goes all the way up on the into on uh, into the energy chain comes down and it's one of these two basically and it goes uh, to cool down the z-axis ball screw and then it goes back and then it continues um, on its way then we've got these three fittings that you can see here uh, these three are for grease um, pipes so we've got one two three one is for the z-axis ball screw and these two each for uh, one of the, the linear blocks and these three all they go uh, onto the the uh, inside the energy chains and then all the way back to somewhere around here where they connect to a progressive um, grease distributor system uh, which is a, a multi-mechanical pump uh, but we'll get to that at, uh, at a later episode um, what else uh, yeah the actual uh, parallelism of the ball screw to the linear guideway uh, I've got uh, I think a story on my Instagram page which I will link it down below and it's now parallel to better than one micron with the z-axis linear guideway both in this direction and in this direction uh, so it's pretty accurate uh, and it's also quite dead center in between these two uh, as you can see it's a bit of a, a jigsaw puzzle how to move these lines around and then how to hold them in place uh, we've added some springs uh, I hope you can see them inside the tubes so when you bend them uh, a little bit uh, over their sort of bending radius like this so uh, so that they don't uh, form a I don't know how you call it a crease or something like that so if you bend this a lot at some point it starts doing something which I don't really like which is bending a lot and um, then it can tighten the actual channel inside so these springs are to prevent that um, as you can see I've used uh, plastic tie wraps but uh, plastic tie wraps over time they can deteriorate and wear out and crumple and uh, I don't like them so over them I've added these uh, metal wires so uh, they uh, the actual plastic uh, tie wraps they use uh, they 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 serve as a as a, a a bigger surface so that these wires don't eat into the uh, the actual plastic tubes um, as you can see i've used very large tubes and that's mainly one of the the, the hardest part of you know moving these lines around the reason is uh, if you s sort of shrink and you know, the diameter or if you use a smaller diameter tube then obviously your pump needs to push and push and work harder and harder um, so uh, when you've got a, a much larger diameter it's it's easier on the pump itself so these are 12 millimeter lines um, so 12 millimeter OD and 8 millimeter ID then I've got uh, this coupling here uh, there is a there are a few different designs of couplings that you can use on uh, the original design I used a disc coupling but uh, there are some pros and cons with the disc couplings uh, they can transmit a more torque uh, usually uh, but in this case I don't need much torque I, uh, I actually need accuracy and the bellows coupling are a little bit more expensive well a lot more expensive sometimes uh, but they are uh, amazing when it comes to accuracy so there is absolutely zero backlash on these these are from a brand called rw which is a german brand one of the best in the world really and uh, yeah so that's that's how it works 
I'll move this axis up, like so, and I'll show you how it looks like from here. So as you can see, these lines had to be very, very close to each other. And it's it was a little bit difficult to, to move them around, really. Then inside, I've assembled this one, which is the, uh, the bracket for the, uh, the rear end um, bearing for the Y-axis ball screw, that end. Then we've got these lines that cool down the, the Y-axis ball screw, plus the, the grease and also a, uh, a Renishaw um, linear scale reed head. It's that one. Uh, yeah, I might change the position of these lines because um, when they come out of the actual, uh, this axis there, uh, it's proven to be a bit difficult to move them around and maneuver them to the place I want. But I've got space down here, so I might uh, change the position of these and then feed them through there. Um, yeah, so this is another coupling for this axis. As you can see, it's it's very, very smooth action. This is now fully preloaded. So it's, it's super, super smooth. As you can see, it's very, very simple to, to move the axis around. Um, yeah, same goes with the X axis. Uh, I'll let go of this. This is just coming down on its own. Um, yeah, this is also, again, super, super smooth. This is a tool that um, I've built and also, so this has been turned and then ground inside. And this is to bring the actual motor to the center of the ball screw. Then we'll remove this and put a coupling in place. So this is just a, a little tool uh, to basically bring those two in, in the center of each other because I didn't have enough space to use a DTI to move it around and then to be able to um, sort of bring the, the actual center of the, the motor shaft to the, the, the ball screw shaft. So hopefully this tool would, would do the job. Um, then I've installed uh, these plates, as you can see here. So these are, I believe, four millimeter thick stainless steel plates. And these are basically to bolt down um, the actual granite to the base but they don't just bolt them uh, because uh, if you've watched the previous videos I said that there is an isolation pad um, in between these two so I've got a an anti-vibration mat between the granite bit and the structure of the machine stand um, so I hope I can show it to you here so there's a rubbery mat just there, it's about 10 millimeters thick. Then we've got these plates, but obviously if you just bolt them, then uh, you might as well not have that mat. So what I've done instead, I've used these types of uh, plastic, um, I don't know what you call them, washers maybe. Um, these used in motorcycles. So it's a rubber type of gasket um, and inside it's got a bushing. So uh, once you tighten these bolts, it's transmitting, uh, it's, it's actually just holding this in place so that if, for example, you lift this up, this will not fall down, but it's completely floating. So the plate is fixed onto the bed, but it's not fixed onto uh, the structure. The r these rubbers around the bolts allow them to shake and move and wiggle. Um, so that's the whole idea of these. Uh, these are obviously tightened, but they are tightened on that bushing in the center of the, the plastic uh, washery thingy. Um, so I hope you understand that. Uh, then we've got these plates. So there's this plate, which has been machined, lapped, uh, no, not lapped, uh, ground. Uh, there's also another one over here. That one is uh, for housing a a fixed table so if you've watched the video on the design of the machine there's a fixed uh, table uh, with uh, t-slots so you can bolt something down so that's for that one plus there's another plate that goes on to here uh, extend this 
to around here for the tool changing mechanism that moves around here. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, I've, uh, yeah, I've installed these. So these are just uh, rubber uh, type of uh, protector sheet, uh, which are spring loaded. And uh, there's going to be a shaft with a bearing here and another one up here. So this will come, rotate 180 degree, and then goes that way, connects to this plate. So that's to protect these, uh, all the elements inside, so all the components inside. Uh, then they've, they, we've got another sheet metal up here, so nothing will get uh, into this area. There's another layer protecting these areas and also on the side. So everything would be fully enclosed. You don't, you will, you will not see these linear guides or the bolt screws at all, um, either from the top or from underneath or from the sides. It's all fully protected. Uh, I've got another sheet metal up here uh, that protects everything that goes back there and a couple of other sheet metals around the sides. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be fully protected. Um, I've done a little bit inside the control cabinet as well, uh, some minor wiring. Um, some people wanted to see it, so I'll just move this around. It's on wheels still, so it's super simple to move it around. I'll just show you a snippet of uh, uh, just a glimpse of what this will look like um, eventually, but yeah. So this is the inside of the control cabinet. I've got a, uh, there are a few drives. So that's, that's the brains of the, the operation. So that's a, a Beckhoff um, IPC. Um, this is, I think, a Core i5 system with probably eight or 12 gigs of RAM and uh, maybe 500 gigs of SSD, something like that. Um, and then I've got a power um, switching or, or the power unit for the for the drives. These drives each can control two axes. Um, so one would be for the X plus uh, Y and then Z and spindle. Uh, and then each accept a second encoder as well. I've got two 10 amps, 24 volts power switching units. Um, then I've got the two CPC drives. These are EtherCAT as well. So one is for, the smaller one is for the A axis actually. The bigger one is for the C axis, that one. Then I've got the, uh, the EtherCAT uh, cards, IO cards. So one of them is for an encoder, which I've got for the spindle, uh, some temperature sensors that uh, are dotted around the machine. Um, then there are some I.O. cards, then there is a stepping motor drive, one of those is actually a stepper drive, um, which is for the rotary axis of the, the tool changer, some relays, and then some um, circuit breakers down there underneath. Uh, so it's very, very compact as you can see, uh, because I didn't have really enough space really, so everything is just pushed. <laughs> together but uh, everything fitted so uh, it's it's all it's all good uh, we did a little bit of wiring uh, but as you can see but it's not it's not finished yet so it's it's got a lot of um, a lot more work to do uh, but yeah that's how it looks like I will make episodes about these um, in and, and explain everything in detail how everything works at some point um, so yeah I hope you uh, you like this video uh, and if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Cheers.